It's not necessarily something that would happen anyway, but clearly on the back of COVID, it's something that I think we need to get into. It was quite clear that despite all of the pandemic preparedness planning that countries had done, they were largely ineffectual when COVID started to, to spread across the world. So if we want to be better prepared or better to, to deal with the next pandemic, and the last 20 years have clearly shown us there, there is going to be another one, then we need to start to um, scan the horizon for potential uh, new viruses breaking into the human population. And as soon as we get the signal that something is happening, we need to start to, to go down the process of creating you know, prototype vaccines and tests and therapies so that we can roll them out you know, immediately. And we have to be prepared that maybe 99 times out of 100 is going to be a false alarm for that one in 100 where it turns out to be the next pandemic. It's going to be a lifesaver. Sure. And I completely agree with that. We, we certainly weren't prepared enough uh, for COVID. And, and so I do get that rationale. But I do want to question who is we when you say, you know, we need to get ahead of the curve. We need to uh, sort of um, prepare in advance. Because for me, I don't think China is necessarily a trustworthy player in all of this. Other people might disagree. But should we trust China to, to be um to, to take over this sort of mass production of these vaccines when, let's be honest, they weren't very transparent and there hasn't been much accountability when it came to COVID. But just because China's doing it doesn't stop anyone else from doing it. And, and, and unfortunately, the, the, the situation is that for mass production of the lateral flow tests and all the other tests that, that, that you know, the world was reliant on for so long were, were largely from China. So, you know, if we don't want to rely on China for, for things, then we have to change our production capabilities. And that was clearly something that was, you know, hugely missing in terms of PPE and tests and, and many of the other components required, to, you know, during the pandemic. We, we've lost our manufacturing base for, for most things, in, including in public health. And certainly we were ill prepared in terms of our diagnostics. Um, yeah. vaccines we were able you know the, the forefront from so no the, the we i was referring to is the global community so mm. who should be taking a lead on this we've got several other organizations because it's quite clear that, that surveillance and preparedness has to be on a global level and, and trying to do it as an individual nation just simply doesn't work with, mm. the, with the way the world is set up at the moment yeah now obviously something that's turned out to be very very lucrative for numerous pharmaceutical companies uh, in relation to covid of course was the vaccine right What's the crack when it comes to the monkeypox vaccine? Is it going to have to be adapted from the smallpox vaccine, as far as I understand it? Is that right? Uh, at the moment, perhaps not. So the smallpox vaccine appears to have already high levels of efficacy against um, monkeypox. Uh, it has been used uh, to, to ring fence outbreaks in Africa before, seemingly very successfully, and that was in, you know, in, in, in resource-limited settings. So, um, you know, the, the reason or the details of the China starting to make its own vaccine may be because it doesn't want to be reliant on um, the relatively small number of manufacturers that are still in the business of making smallpox vaccine. Of course, that's had very limited use since the, the global eradication. Um, it's been used you know, largely uh, as precautionary to have some stockpiles in, in, in events of outbreaks of, 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 of related viruses. And this is one of those. And uh, very finally, Dr. Andrew, can you just tell us, um, tell us and our viewers and our listeners what they should be looking out for in terms of uh, monkeypox? What are the symptoms? How is it transmitted? Sure. Unfortunately, like most infectious diseases, it starts off with non-specific symptoms. So, you know, those that we're all too familiar with in terms of feeling a bit coldy, achy, um, shivers. Uh, and then, of course, the, the, the real defining feature of this is that then that progresses into a rash. Uh, ordinarily starts off on maybe the face and the upper body and progresses. Uh, perhaps with the method that it's being transmitted in some communities, it can start off in other regions. Um, and, and, and really, for most people, it's a case of isolate so that you're not passing it on to others. Uh, and in a vast majority of people, your, your, your natural immune system will, will take care of the infection over a course of a couple of weeks.